it's December and this was supposed to be up on October. Hello everyone and welcome to another Daniel Reads Reviews where I'll be discussing with you a new book. Alright, so the book of the week was Mexican Gothic by um, Silvia Moreno Garcia and it was a gothic slash mystery slash fantasy uh, book. It was perfect for October but here I am reviewing it in December. So the book takes us back to 1950s Mexico in the glamorous social elite life of Naomi Taboada. She's an heiress, she is rich, and her life consists of just going to cocktail parties and dressing up and just being this glamorous, beautiful, young, rich girl. Her cousin gets married off to this mysterious family and goes away. And when she receives letters, very concerning letters from her cousin asking her to rescue her from this mansion and this family, her father sends her away to High Place in the countryside of Mexico where her cousin uh, Catalina lives with her a new family. There she discovers a lot of weird stuff going on in this ancient place with this ancient rich family. Well, it used to be rich. They used to be in like mining business and stuff, but then something happened that killed a lot of the workers there. So they had to shut off the silver mines, but the family remained very mysterious and very suspicious and scary. And when Naomi digs deeper into this family, she discovers the horrors and the violence and the history of this mysterious and creepy family. So let's discuss the writing style real quick. Sylvia Moreno wrote this book in a very beautiful way i actually liked the description in it i like the history i liked the whole mexican vibes that was going on because it was set in mexico in the 50s and it was really interesting to see how mexico was back then and the problems that women faced in that era and in that place in the world so it was really really interesting to see how things went on and how the author decided to describe it a lot of authors aren't really accurate when it comes to these things because they don't do their research and not that i know a lot about mexican culture and mexican history but it really was fun and engaging to read it throughout uh, this book and she just she's great at writing mystery and gothic i believe i only read like a handful of gothic books but this was amazing i actually enjoyed the writing very much and also the plot which i'll be discussing now so plot wise this book was very engaging i enjoyed every bit of the plot twists and the characters and their engagement with each other as well as their development throughout the story at times i found it to be a bit boring and sometimes it just dragged on i just needed to know what was going to happen next but it just dragged a bit but other than that, the plot was actually really engaging and I enjoyed the story thoroughly. It discussed a lot of magic and violence and just, I don't know if I should plug trigger warnings, but maybe I should. There's like a bit of violence going on and killings. So if you're triggered by such topics and themes, maybe stay away from this book. But other than that, it was just enjoyable to go through. It discussed, as I mentioned before, women back in the day in the 50s and specifically in Mexico, because the protagonist of the book was a social elite, but she was also very independent and she did not really care for her husband that much, but she was like forced into it kind of because that is how women survive back in the day they find a good husband and they start a good family especially if you're if you come from like a high background like her because she was an heiress so it discussed a lot of women issues and it also spoke about like ancient families and ancient magic and just dark stuff 
which is something that is in the Mexican culture that like they discuss these things a lot and they have it in their culture so it was really really fun to read that through a fantasy book now character wise I'll be discussing three to four characters right now the first character I'm going to talk about is the protagonist Naomi was such a cool protagonist she was really different and she defied what normal used to be back then she was very fierce she was very curious and her curiosity got her in a lot of trouble but still she ended up saving the day at the very end of course i'm not gonna spoil the story for you because that's not what i do on dalian reads and everyone knows it that's my brand but i would like to talk about her aspirations and her dreams she studied in university and she's a university graduate and she wanted to further her studies and take her master in anthropology and i just thought that that was really cool for a woman even fictional back in the day to have these aspirations in the 50s that was amazing to me girl power her personality and her character in general was amazing i loved the protagonist and i don't usually like protagonists because sometimes they are like really annoying especially in fantasy books but in this book naomi was truly the winner another character i want to talk about is catalina her cousin who went off and got married and lived in high place that creepy mansion catalina was a dreamer she was one of those girls who just wished to get married have this insane love story and just you know settle down and have a family and there's nothing wrong with that like i feel like a lot of girls or women even in these days get shamed for wishing for so little but that's okay like everyone has different aspirations and different dreams and you are not allowed to belittle a, a certain group of people just because they chose to live their lives differently if you have aspirations and goals and just want to chase them and want to be the glamorous one in your group that's okay but allow other people to have maybe normal aspirations or like mundane ones because in their eyes that is success itself and it is it actually is so Catalina was a very humble character in that manner but she was also interesting to get to know and basically she was the damsel in distress in this book until the very end all right so now i'm gonna discuss the people that actually lived in high place so the first person i'm gonna talk about is catalina's husband virgin virgin was such a creepy character like from the very beginning i did not like him at all i just thought that he was very suspicious he was hiding something and i was right they were all hiding this huge secret but the person that made me suspicious most was Virgil, Catalina's husband. And the way they just acted was very, very unsettling in general, like the whole family. But Virgil was acting like he was like the big guy. He was the person who took care of everything and like there's nothing to be afraid of. Like those are the types of people that you would be afraid of the most because they're the ones who are hiding the most because they're pretending to be something they're not. Like for his aunt, she was creepy and she wasn't afraid to show it. Like she was actually being herself. Like she was a creep <laughs> from beginning to end. But he was acting like he was like the big guy, the person who like pretended to know everything and was like very reassuring and was like oh there is nothing going on he was like the person that made you feel like you're the crazy one that is why he was the creepiest to me okay motorcycle <laughs> he was like the creepiest one to me all right and the last character i'm gonna talk about is francis who is virgil's cousin and he was like this sweet little angel like he wanted to protect him all the time because he was just so innocent and just caught up in the craziness that is his family and the craziness that is high place 
he was basically the victim there even though he knew the secrets even though he knew about the madness he was just trying to survive and trying to just you know just stay out of trouble but trouble followed him especially after he decided to help Naomi and Katerina out of that place I respected him a lot because he just stood up against everything that he once was taught to believe in and to follow. He was the rebel in disguise because all his life he only knew of high place and just living there and following the rules, following the family, footsteps. And Naomi came over, she changed everything for him, to the better of course. I think he was the person with the most character development in this book. I'm really proud of him. One thing I actually liked about him a lot was the fact that he was fascinated with fungus and types of fungus. And he was also an artist and a painter. And I just thought that that was really sweet and was such a nice side to look at. And the craziness that is this book. All right, so my last thoughts regarding this book are this it was a good read for october i loved both the plot and the writing there was also romance in this book of course i forgot to mention that but there was romance so if you're into this type of creepy mystical gothic romance kind of thing then this book is definitely for you you would enjoy this a lot all right so that is it for today's review i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you stick around for next week's review and until next time see ya and bye